Good morning. Today is May 3rd, 2020, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Picture a lush meadow with a large flock of sheep enjoying the fresh air and sunshine. The first Sunday in May, situated right in the middle of spring, may lend itself to such daydreams. But this is no daydream, for we indeed are part of a flock with a devoted shepherd, one who calls us each day by name and invites us to have life and have it more abundantly. Let us join together today in joy and gratitude. Today's mass intentions are being offered for our parishioners who died from the coronavirus. Please let us greet our celebrant, Father Victor. Sisters and brothers, we gather on this fourth Sunday of Easter to celebrate the Good Shepherd, the Shepherd who knows his flock, the Shepherd who guides his flock. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the presence of this Shepherd amongst us today, we recall to mind our own calls.
almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was extorting them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In burdened pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what's good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself for our sins upon his body, upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you have gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. According to John. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hears his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and to destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Sisters and brothers, the good news of the Lord. secure or are there moments in your life that comes to mind in which even in the midst of distress you were certain that all will be well if so these days should be one of those moments the coronavirus has shattered and destroyed lives and dreams. In these days, our lives are filled with activity. Our lives are filled with anxiousness and with concern. People, yes, experience illness, loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, 
a deep feeling of insecurity. People experience grief. Yes, even sometimes anger and loneliness. All of these are very, very real human experiences that leave us overwhelmed, leave us tired, and yes, leave us stressed. So during these days, remaining faithful to the gospel or following the Good Shepherd, remaining faithful to our faith is being tested as never before. And so today, the gospel presents to us a very, very comforting imagery. The gospel presents to us and describes Jesus as the gate, the good shepherd, the gate for the sheep. Describes to us the shepherd who calls to the sheep, who recognize his voice, and yes, who follow him. In the shepherd's care, the sheep will be fed. The sheep will be protected. The sheep will feel secure. Knowing someone is watching, watching out for them. Unlike sheep in the watchful care of the shepherd, we are assured that whether in the circumstances of our lives, whether coping with the impact of COVID-19, or just whether bearing the responsibilities of being a Christian, we know that we are not alone. We are not alone. And yes, indeed, we are never alone. The Lord is with us in the daily circumstances of our lives. The Lord is with us in the face of COVID-19. And yes, the Good Shepherd knows the toll, the toll that the pain, the grief, and sorrow can take. That's why scripture tells us and scripture assures us that if God is for us, who can be against us? Not even COVID-19 can be against us because the good Lord shields us from anything that will destroy us or make us lose our faith. Today, therefore, we have a good description of the Good Shepherd. A Good Shepherd who keeps at bay all that will harm us, all that will harm the sheep, and who gives them life. As the last sentence of the Gospel says, give them life in all its fullness. Give them life more abundantly. Today we have a description of a Shepherd who understands pain. A shepherd who understands rejection and who understands loss. A shepherd who still bears the scars and the wounds of humanity's cruelty. The good shepherd who did lay down his life for his sheep, for others. So the image of Christ as our shepherd challenges us to get to know God and to walk in his way. We need to learn to recognize his voice, yes, by spending time, particularly these days, spending time in prayer, spending time in listening to his words in the scriptures, in meeting him in the sacraments, and in the people and events in our lives. And it means learning to follow him. No matter the circumstance, learning to identify with the people that Jesus spent time with. 
the poor, the outcast, the marginalized of society, the neglected. It means taking part in the struggle, in the effort to build a better world. Each of us as Easter people, each of us as people who are secure in the care of the Good Shepherd are expected to share this care with others. And we have seen that these past weeks. We have seen that in those nurses, those doctors, those first responders who, yes, despite the danger, gave their service. Why? Because they want to make this world a better place. To build a better world. To follow the good shepherd. To follow the example laid by Jesus when he laid down his life for his sheep. So sisters and brothers, there have been a lot of discussion beside the questions that people have been asking about oh, the cause of this, why there is this COVID-19 and so on and so forth. Those who would like to blame God. But a lot of questions as to when all of this is gone, when all of this is finished, what is going to be or some say, oh, I can't wait to get back to the normal life. For sisters and brothers, I'm saying that there is not going to be a normal life. The situation of this virus has changed us forever. And if it hasn't changed you, then I do not know where you have been living. It has changed us. Because it is now part of our experiences. And we are told you experience something you do not forget. Because if you forget, you're going to fall into the same trap again. Yes, you're going to fall into the same trap again. That is why, yes, it's good to open up society, to open up the nations. Let's go back and energize, revitalize. The economy, this is all good. If we rush it, then that means we are not learning from our experiences. Sisters and brothers, there is not going to be the usual normal. But I definitely responded to the changes and our experiences, there's going to be a new normal. And I hope that new normal will follow the traits, the character the example given us today by the Good Shepherd. So next time you are in church, sisters and brothers, listening to the voices of praise <clears throat> and worship, take a moment to thank God for the gift of congregation. The gift of congregation. I got a lot of calls when we first started this live streaming through Facebook from our parishioners, oh, I'm very happy to see my church again. Yes, we begin to miss it. I missed it. So we should give thanks to Almighty God and take a moment every day to thank God for the gift of congregation. Next time you are in a situation of prayer, pray as positively and fervently as you have done these past weeks. Someone sent me a WhatsApp video and the video showed people from different parts of the world now who knelt down in the streets. Knelt down in the streets. Some even held the flag, their national flag. And this person collated these images and then have the song, recorded this song over it. I surrender all. When I looked at that image, 
see people with their hands raised up in total surrender to God. Wouldn't that be wonderful if that's how we do every day of our lives? We didn't have only to wait for situations like this. Because to God is the glory, not only during horrible times, but all of the time. Remember what we always say, that God is good. And we don't say God is good some of the time. We say God is good to us all of the time. So we should passionately and fervently pray as we have done these past weeks. And next time you are in a grocery store, take the time to thank God for the amazing but oftentimes unappreciated people who work so hard these days to keep us supplied with the necessities of life. I know how many times I have gone to the grocery store nearby and you see those workers trying to refill the shelves. And I know how I feel when I see that, oh, there is bread today or there is milk. Who put those things there? There are people who put their lives in danger to make sure that, yes, we are supplied with the necessities of life. Sisters and brothers, the new normal should be pray more, love harder, truly appreciate people, and the daily abundance, truly appreciate the daily abundance of blessings around us that we so easily overlook and overlooked a few weeks ago. The good shepherd has come. The good shepherd has showed us the way. And this good shepherd is here to protect and guide us as long as we, the sheep, respond to him. Amen. Amen. Guided by our good shepherd, we pray our prayer of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God is true God. Begotten of faith, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became flesh. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of Christ. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. They will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess for baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, just as we know the voice of the Good Shepherd, we trust that God knows our voices and responds to our prayers. So we gather together our needs, the needs of our community, the needs of our nation, and the needs of our world. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be a living witness to the need for repentance, individuality, and collectively, 
always returning to the good shepherd who calls us each by name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations at war and all people affected by violence, that leaders may find a way to bring justice and peace to their land. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who respond to the voice of the Good Shepherd, calling them to help shepherd the flock for ordained and lay vocations among God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have suffered physical, mental, and emotional trauma, that they may find relief and comfort through assistance of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have wandered far from the fold, that they may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and be open to responding in hope and wonder. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all of our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, like sheep who find their home with their flock, help us to find our home in you. Grant this and all our prayers through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
We now pray, sisters and brothers, that my and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands when we pray to the glory of his name for our good and good all to the church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your clergy and religious. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with St. Aloysius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and church, your sheep. Peace I leave you, my sheep I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith, and graciously grant us your peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. And we shall support for one another and love one another as we wish each other some sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. This indeed is he who takes away the sins of the world. The good shepherd who guides us to the Father. And happy are we all who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter our mind, but only say the word. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, once again, I want to thank, particularly this time, the, the army of the young people <laughs> who have been uh, coming here every Sunday. And as a matter of fact, they are the organizers of this live streaming through Facebook. So, our special thanks to them, to these soldiers. And I want to thank Michelle especially for that yes. wonderful yes. song. Yes. And of course, our indefatigable Dave, the, uh, the yes. And today we have representing the parish, uh, Isaac and uh, Mary, uh, of course, their husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Achoba. Now we bow our heads for God's special blessing. By the way, for all those of you who are home, may God continue to bless you and keep you in good health. Amen. And we pray that you all keep the faith. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on us the gift of redemption and of adoption, give us gladness by his blessings. The church say Amen. 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 May he, by whose redeeming work we have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make us heirs to an eternal inheritance. We say amen. Amen. And may we, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner of this, on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. 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 And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. come down upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, our Mass is now ended and we'll go in the peace of Christ. Amen. See you next Sunday, same time, same church, same channel. <laughs>